wat u mij gekomen vandaag. Jezus heeft het overwonnen. Amen. Alleluia. Nothing is too big for him. You have done it all for me. Can't do not hold you down. You are the risen king. You You are king. 
We worship you, our King. We worship you, our King. We worship you, our King. We worship you, our King. We worship you, our King. We worship you, our King. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, our King. We worship you, our King. We worship you. 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 We worship you, our King. We worship you, our King. Who shall deliver it? Your presence is heaven. Is heaven to us, O Papa? Who shall calibroske? I want you to worship Him from your whole heart. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless word. Nothing in this world, nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. One more time, sing, who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love. Matchless love and beauty, endless world. Nothing in this world. Nothing in Oh, Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, your presence, your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Papa, your presence, your presence, your presence.
peace on earth I will await the moment that I see you face to face nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry one more time all my days all my days on earth I will await the moment that I see you the moment that I Nothing in this world can satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. 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 Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. 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 Your presence, your presence, it is heaven.
is in your worship. It's not how you look. How people see you. It's in your worship. It's in your personal worship. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you praise. Thank you, Master. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Somebody take your seat in heavenly places. Take your seat in heavenly places.
Now, um, Pastor Arno, bring me that pulpit, put it here now. It has done what it has to do. Thank you, Jesus. Get the other Bible, just put it there. We give you praise. We give you praise. I want to teach you something very small. Say, pursuing Christ. And this afternoon, I'll be talking about why Christ from another, from another angle. From another angle. And I'll be preaching from Psalms 103. And it will be why Christ. But this morning, I want to talk to you about something. How many of you want power? How many of you want to be a blessing to somebody? Okay, today I want to show you the way to blessing. The way. Tell somebody the way. Now, I would love you to open the, your Bibles to the book of First Peter 1. 1, verse 1 to 11. Remember, we have been dealing with them. What is that? Philippians 3, verse what? Verse huh? verse and we are still there. Tell somebody we are still there. Yes. That Paul said, that I may know, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering. So, next week, we are entering the month of power. That means from the first to the end of April will just be the demonstration of power. Amen. Manifestation of gifts, flowing in spiritual gifts, doing the work of the ministry, going out there and allowing Christ to use you. So you stop giving excuses that I'm not a pastor, I am not this, I am not that. God want to use everybody. Say everybody. And you can't miss the early morning glories. I'm announcing it before it happened. And by the way, this is our last month. Our, uh, the, the end of April is our last month in this building. Amen. We are out of this place for good. And never to return. Amen. So end of April we are out. And first May we are entering our new building. Amen. We are entering with all boldness, with all anointing, with all. I tell you, we are entering with everything. 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 So, so you get ready. First of May we are out of this place. It's an exit for life. So, get yourself ready, entering into that building, and within no time, God is filling that place. I tell you, he's filling that place with so much capacity. So, watch this. Where are we? First Peter 1, verse, chapter, what is that? Chapter 1, verse 11. I want you to read that for me. Let me see where we are going this, mo this morning. Searching what? Yes. Thank you. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, <coughs> did signify. Okay, now start reading from verse 10 so that we can know where we are going. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So they prophesied. We have learned about that. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? So now, verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ 
and the glory that should follow. The sufferings then, the glory. The sufferings then, the power. Are you, are you getting this? You see, you have not been trained as a Christian to make up your mind before things come to pass. Most Christians, their mind is not framed for certain things that come their way. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 13, Peter says, get up the loins of thy mind. So watch this. If I come to you, I tell you that you will suffer, then the glory. I am helping you to prepare your mind. Are you here this morning? Are you here this morning? The Bible says, wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. That has to be the area of your soul. Because your soul is made up of your mind, will, and emotions. He said, fasting the belt of truth around it. Make up your mind because if you must walk in power, you must experience suffering. If you must be a blessing, the first thing that you must really enter into for that to happen is suffering. Suffering is so, I mean, Jesus said, if they persecute me, they will persecute you also. A disciple is trained through suffering. Forget this thing that we see in church. Come to church, you will be rich. Come to church. Well, I don't preach like that. And I will never. Now, there is nothing wrong with prosperity. But don't manipulate people with it. Because wealth is your birthright. Oh, you, don't, you didn't get what I said. I say wealth is your birthright. I don't think, how do they call her? The daughter of King William. Huh? I don't think she is praying for wealth. It's her birthright. It's her birthright. What she needs is knowledge. So that when she receives what is hers, she will keep. There is too much nonsense sometimes when you hear it. You begin to wonder, is this really it? Come to church, you will be healed. It's not only about healing. Healing is also your birthright. But you see, most people are not taught on the, to walk on the pathway of power. And that pathway of power has to do with suffering. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to accept it. But surely all they that live godly in Christ, except you are not living godly. And the Lord knoweth them that are his. And the Bible says, and ye that name the name of the Lord should depart from iniquity. Should depart, that means run away. Iniquity should not be named among you. Fornication should not be named among you. Adultery should not be named among you. Lying and cheating should not be named among you. Drunkenness should not be named among you. That is what we believe. That is what we believe. Is somebody getting this? So, before the coming of Jesus, like how Paul's an, um, assignment was announced, it was already announced. He will suffer, then the glory will be revealed. It was announced. The prophet put that text again. Put that text. The way of power is the way of the cross. The way of power is the way of the Passover. Jesus did not come back to life 
because of anything. He come back to life because he opened up his flesh. Oh, that one is too high for you, so let me let that one go. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Put me another version. And that's why sometimes people cannot really follow you as a Christian. They don't see his character. They don't see it. Now in church, they, they, we place value on some things. When somebody comes to church, have some small money. The person is something. Trust me, I will love you. But you will not take no other place. If you have to sit on the back seat, sit there. By the way, by the way, you can't support God. It's a revelation you must receive by yourself. He supports you and sustains you because without your money, it can perish in your pocket. You can just sleep, it finishes. One night. One night! If you don't know, ask Naba. And if you don't know, go ask the rich fool. If you don't know. So now look at this thing. So, brace up your mind, my God, your minds. Be sober. Circumspect, morally alert. Set your hope holy and unchangeable on the grace of divine favor that is coming to you when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is revealed. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Jesus said, if any man must come after me, he must put the message. Luke 9, verse 23. Luke 9, verse 23. I tell people, that fornication is because you don't fear God. That lies telling you don't fear God. Yeah, you don't. Hey, you don't. You love him and you don't fear him. That joint you are taking, you don't fear him. You don't. Anita, flow with me. Move. Then he told them what they could expect for themselves. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Let him lead. You are not the leader. Let him lead. Let him lead you. So when Paul was saying that I may know him, I may be aware of him, I may have an understanding of him, Paul was saying, I want to let him lead. You can't know Christ when you are leading. That's why you have many problems. You are still trying to fix things by yourself. And nobody that tries to fix things by themselves ever stands on their feet. Because you are not born again to trust in the arm of flesh. You are not also born again to trust in your ability. You are not. Even your choices in life. The Bible says, make your plans and commit it to the Lord and allow him to direct it. But we have a generation of people that make decisions and do a lot of things that don't involve God. They don't. But yet, they want to succeed. They want to prosper. They want to flow in power. Are, are, are you getting this? They want to flow in power. They want to succeed. They want to excel in life. Now look at this thing. So when Paul was saying this, it wasn't like Paul was not aware that he was born again to suffer for Christ. He was fully aware. And he also knew that is the only place in which the power of God will be revealed in his life for him to be a blessing. See what he said in the book of 1 Corinthians 4 verse 10. Put it, put it on the board. 
See what he said. See what he said. We are coming back to this. We are fools. Oh, Anita, read it. Read it, read it for me. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. We are despised. The Bible, every says, he bears on his, his body the marks of Christ. Paul. Now in church, you can't hear this thing emphasized enough. We don't ever hear it. We only hear, come to church, you will be blessed. Come to church, you will be rich. Come to church, you will be healed. You see, one day, I was talking to a man of God, and the man of God said something. He said to me, you know why people are confused about this healing thing? You went to the street, you told the people, come to church, you will be healed. So, when they came to church, they were healed, they went back home. Because it's like a hospital, you understand? Then you are telling them, why are you not in church? They know no, I came to take my healing, that's why I went back. Because when a person goes to the hospital, you don't stay there forever. But if you tell them, come to the house of God, that is the ground and the pillar of truth. That is the place you must stay. That is the place you must be groomed. That is the place you must be taught. Their mindset will be different. So the way we present the gospel is wrong. Come and take and go. Come and take. Come, you'll be rich. Even now, they put a program. Ten days to be a millionaire. I want to tell you. I want to tell you, people will line up from the streets. They, 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 they will line up. The line will be long. In short, it will be long in such a way that police will surely be around this neighborhood. Because they will not know what is going on. But come, let me teach you to carry a cross and follow Jesus. Nobody want that. Nobody. It's such a pity that we go for the hand instead of going for the source. And you want power. Which one? Which one? That's why you are not a blessing. Because every little thing that comes your way, you shrink back. It's the fail. I cannot take it anymore. I can't. I can't. I can't. But have you ever stopped to think that the one that is praying for you is going through the same and is laying hands on you? Hello. Have you also ever stopped to think that is because they allow to take up that cross? That is why they experience the power. Have you ever stopped to think? Paul was telling us to embrace the mind of Christ. To embrace it. There is too much there is selfishness in our talk. Ik, 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 ik. Sometimes I hear people talk. In short, I nearly want to fall asleep. Sometimes even I want to close the conversation fast, but you don't know. So I'm trying to change it. You keep coming back. I'm trying to change it. That means you are talking nonsense. Trust me. There are many things that are so irrelevant to spend hours discussing on it. You did not discuss the word for hours. But you are busy discussing irrelevant things for hours. When they tell you to even pray for one hour, you can't. You can, by yourself, you can't. You are praying, you are looking at the clock. It's still 30 minutes. Of course, you are in the flesh in prayer. It is your flesh that recognizes time. Because when you are really in some level, some dimensions of prayer in the spirit, you don't even know whether you have clocked six hours. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't also know whether you have lived nine hours. 
Because when the spirit carries you, it's different from when you are trying to do things by yourself. That is why sometimes you see in our churches, there is all kinds of rampant things happening. It's like the Corinthian church. They had all gifts, but they don't know anything about holiness, sanctification, or anything. The Bible says, and let this mind be in you. But before then, we can see some previous things that happened. Put a text. Let's go there. <clears throat> say, make up your mind. Look at your neighbor. Say, make up your mind. Say, make up your mind. Make up your mind. Don't let, when you are going through some small thing, you start to think like something strange is happening to you. Then you see somebody say, I stop, I quit. Oh, listen to me, listen to me. Let me tell you something. When I worked at e and my colleagues were speaking Italian, Italian by force. So, they spoke Italian to discourage my work. That means express. When I come to the office, they speak Italian. They call it an international company. But they were speaking Italian. So me, I didn't worry. You know, Jean-Pierre, my head is hot. Trust me. It didn't move me. So when I also sit on my desk, I start to speak in tongues. <laughs> you don't understand me. Some of you have not understood me for long. That is what I'm telling you now. I start speaking in tongues. And you know, I was working with 42 different companies doing bank reconciliation. So I could put a preaching in my ear and do my job without talking to nobody. They discovered that I've ignored them for long. They start to speak in English. I am the last person that you intimidate. Trust me. I can tell you that boldly in your face. I know I'm simple, but I'm the last. Somebody will stand up and say, the man saying is a racist. So I'm a racist. I, I, I don't know what you are talking about. I don't even know why you have to mention they are racist. No, I don't need to say that. My language will make you adjust. Yes. You quit. Quit on who is making you quit. Who is trying to take your position? Then you are saying, let me walk away. Let the person come in. That person is not born. That person. Listen, I am born of God. That person is not born yet. And then you quit. You let an idiot sit there. Then you begin to give excuse. It's the way they treat me at the job. You yourself, you were a coward. I just let the guy, I let the marriage go. There are 30 sisters. Some of them are praying for the marriage to end. In short, they are greeting you every morning. They pray, I wish you were the one. Then you, you may not accept it, but it's real. So you that you cannot even endure, you say the guy is acting strange. There is somebody that is just waiting for the window to open to come in. There is somebody. Make up your mind. You are married. Make up your mind. I will stay there till till. You have a job. Make up your mind. You are doing business. Make up your mind. You must be ready before you enter. Casotos. You must be ready. In your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Don't come tomorrow and tell the pastor you quit. When did God ever quit? He said, I am the Lord that God. I change not. He that swore to his own heart and change not. Why are you quitting? It be mu, mu. Why are you tired? Tell me why are you tired? 
was Jesus tired? You want anointing. You want power. But you are giving up. You are giving up. Uh, I was telling somebody something. When Jesus came on earth, at some point, he was aware of the kind of people that he was dealing with. He came to take them to his level. Do you know why most of you put the previous verse? Anita, you will be standing and sitting down. In short, the whole today prepare yourself because I came with a very hot agenda. Start with verse 2 to, to, verse two to 5. Put a version that we can read. One of the things that is getting me a, a little bit, I begin to think about Christians. Why do we easily quit? Why? One little thing happened in the church. You say I quit. I'm going to look for another one. You are an idiot. You will meet it there. Yes, yes, yes. You, you will meet it somewhere. The way they treat me there. Then one day somebody came to church. He said, that church, I don't sense any love there. And the person was thinking the person was very right. You know, people always come to me sometimes, they think they are right. And I was listening. I said, you don't sense any love. When Jesus came into the way, he didn't sense any love either. But what did the Bible say? We love him because... What? Because what? He first loved us. I said, why don't you give them love then? Because you are right. You ought to act like Jesus. You ought to act like Jesus. But the fact that you are complaining, you're also a loser. You want people to change, but you don't want change. You want people to change, but you don't know how to endure. You don't endure anything. You want others to endure. Let me tell you, there is no shortcut to success. I don't care who, who, who told you that. You see, if I have to get to that place, there is no way that I can stretch my leg to get to that pulpit. Then my, 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 my leg will surely break. I have to take some steps. And every step may be a challenge. But I have to take it. Amen. Until I get there and I climb on it. There is no shortcut for success. Be willing to endure. Today, you are standing on the pulpit. Everybody is looking at you at the pulpit. What are they witnessing? The glory. What are they witnessing? So they say, wow, I want to be like Jean-Pierre. But nobody saw the steps you took. Nobody ever knew whether at some point your leg nearly break. That's human beings. They love to celebrate the glory. They love to celebrate the victory. They love to celebrate you when you are on top. But nobody want to recognize you when you are down. We have a generation of people that they are just copying anything. Yeah, I want to be like that person. I want to be like that person. So you just started yesterday. You start a ministry yesterday. You're on Facebook. Evangelism, you don't do. So you spend like three quarter of your time lavishing other pastors. You are a master of doctrines. You know who is preaching the right doctrine and who is preaching the wrong one. We, you know who is the right prophet and who is the wrong one. Except you that is preaching. You are right. You understand? Evangelism, you don't do. Nothing, you don't do. So, those areas that you are failing, nobody is talking about it. You are right. It's a shame. And people will stay on Facebook and they begin to cheer up all these people. Who are you cheering up? Run your own race. Run that race with patience. 
Are you getting this? Read it for me. Fill up and complete my joy by living in harmony and being of the same mind and one in purpose, having the same love, being in full accord and of one harmonious mind and intention. Do nothing from factional motives, through contentiousness, strive, selfishness, or for unworthy ends, or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. Instead, in the true spirit of humility, loneliness of mind, let each regard the others as better than and superior to himself. Is that what we do in church? We don't even care. It's about how you feel. How you feel. Listen, if how I feel, I know that if I share it with you, it's going to affect you. I will never tell you. That's a level of growth. You will never even know it. And you don't need to know it. Because I'm not building you, I'm breaking you. That is also the aspect of carrying your cross and following. <coughs> it's also that aspect. And look, look at this thing. Thinking more highly of one another than you do of yourself. Continue, Anita. Let each of you esteem and look upon and be concerned for not merely his own interests. That is how people interact with people right now. Hello means you are a business partner. Can we do something together? Thieves in church. You see, you just meet people that always want to get something. You don't even know why they greet you good morning. Even their good morning can be suspected. Even their good morning. They look at this thing. <clears throat> but Anita, also each for the interests of others. Yes, and continue verse 5. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you. Be in you. Be in you. The reason why people don't want to go through suffering is because they want to understand the process. You don't need to. You don't need to. The Bible, oh Jesus Christ. In Hebrew chapter 5, Verse 8 to 9. Get there for me. The Bible says, He learned obedience through the things he suffered. Huh? Although he was a son, he learned active special obedience through what he suffered. Then the Bible says, and his completed experience making him perfectly equipped. He became the author and source of eternal salvation to all. Tell somebody, to all. The, to all those who have given heed and obeyed him. But the Bible says, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. What is that? Was he disobedient? Because the Bible says, at some point, the Bible says, and this is my, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus did not disobey. What is God telling us? He experienced the power of obeying God. By the sufferings he experienced. The benefit.
benefits of obeying God through the sufferings he went through. So while he was obeying God and they were persecuting him, the glory of God was being revealed in a higher dimension. He saw how obedience kept him in the midst of the trials. By the way, by the way, how many of you want to be free from demonic power? I, I want to show you something. How many of you really want to be free? How many of you? You see, Paul even came to a place. Say, my boasting is in the cross. Freedom from demonic powers can only be attained by absolute surrender to the cross. By taking up that cross and following him. This room is quiet this morning. <clears throat> freedom. Tell somebody freedom. Tell somebody freedom. So go back to the book of Luke again. Go there. So stop asking God, why? Why am I going through this? No. Obey before understand. Obey. What do I say? What do I say? Obey before understand. Come to church. Obey before you understand why I must be in church. That's why they say, you read the Bible, you say, obedience is better. Obey before understand. When you go, don't have a big mouth towards your husband. Obey before understand. You don't understand me, pastor. You don't understand me, pastor. The way this man is treating me. I want to ask you a question. Are you wiser than God? Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Pastor, you don't understand. It's difficult. So, mister, are you wiser than God? You don't want to obey, but you want to see results. You don't want to obey, but you want to see power. You love to be in a place where people are just lukewarm, callous, cold. And the more you stay with them, the more you start to become lukewarm. The more you stay with them, you start to talk their nonsense language. The more you stay with them, the more you begin to look like them. Anita, read it for me, please. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You are not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Don't run. Don't. 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 Now you must know why. The Bible says, after the suffering, then glory. It was after the animal was placed on the altar. After that animal died, the next thing that happened, fire came. You didn't, you didn't get what I'm saying. When the animal died, fire came. So, without death, there will be no fire. You must, that's why Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your body, your body, that is now, that offering that must be on the altar. Your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. First, the offering on the altar. I wrote a song by the Spirit. The offerings at the altar. The offerings at the altar. 
I offer myself to you as the offering at the altar. I offer myself to you as the offering at the altar. You see, let me tell you, and it did not change. When we are coming on Wednesday, I have Wednesday service. So something happened. I don't leave my room. I don't leave one place. I stay in my prayer room the whole day in short. I stay from my prayer room to the toilet and back, to the toilet and back, and I leave there to church. I don't have time to see nobody's nose. Your nose is not important. I'm just coming to tell you the mind of God. And the thing is, after those services, I'm gone also. I left the people in church to talk to one another. I just look at you and say, you know, we'll talk later. I'm gone. We don't know how to be that sacrifice on the altar. Don't run from suffering. Yes, the gossip about you. Don't run. <coughs> they lied against you. Don't run. They treated you funny. I know. Don't run. That is how you are thickening your flesh. That's what makes you a champion. Don't run. They conspire against you. Don't run. They say things that are not true. Don't run. Because uh, from the day you start to run, the enemy will not stop chasing you till he kill you. So confront it. Don't run. We are not the people that run. We are not the people that draw back. We don't draw back. The battle has been won. We stay in the victory and tell the enemy to back down. We stay in the victory and tell him, shut up. Sometimes it has become like it's a kind of entertainment thing we are doing. How can the man in the world be quitting? You are quitting. When they say their marriage is not working, you two say your marriage is not working. So what's the difference? What's the difference? Now look at this thing. Put that text again. Look. Message. Anita. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. What? Let me ask you. Today is Passover, right? If Jesus runs from the cross, where will you be? No, no. Let's just take it cool. If Jesus said, you know what? That cross, I ran away. After I didn't seem like you people. Where will you be? The long suffering of our Lord is salvation. What are you even going to tell your children that you were a runaway? Every little thing you run, they go through something. They cannot even come to you for advice. Papa, Mama, how do we handle this thing? I don't know. In my time, I just run. <laughs> Papa, Mama, why did you leave that church? They were gossiping. That's why I left. So that child will ask the question Is this small gossip you're running away from? I can't learn from you. Papa, Mama, 
Why didn't you stay with mama? She talked too much. <laughs> Is that why you run away? Papa, you are a chicken. That is the truth. So people cannot really, especially in this country that I am in, it's difficult for you to even tell your child anything. Gladma, the king kakrui, enda kommt. They will understand. What would they understand? No, trust me. It's better to be a Suriname parent than whip them a bit. When you spare the rod, you will spoil the child. I say you will spoil. Most of the time, they remember that we, how we change them. It's not this generation now. They, they remember, you see, they remember how they were trying to cross a certain line. Whoa! Then they say, ah! Now, now, now this generation... They are trying to make their children to become. No. My father will give you a look. <laughs> See, they call it a day a day. <laughs> Just lock the child in the room for two minutes. After you are done with the child. In short, you don't need no place. A day a day will leave. Automatic. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. There are some things that don't need medication. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, he doesn't need, not everything needs medication. Not everything. Is somebody getting it? So I need to get there for me. He said, embrace it. Say, I need to start again with the thing. Don't. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Uh -huh. Follow me and I'll show you how. Follow me. And I will show you how. You see, if, if I have time, I will stay here for long. But I will stop this this week. Because you can't teach everything. What was Jesus teaching you? You can't go through it without the help of the Holy Spirit. And this is where Many people, they are frustrated. They are trying to employ self-help. I was in a church. They treated my wife so bad. I knew everything that was happening. So I choose to seal my mouth. I said, I will not tell her anything. I said, if I tell her what is going on, she will stop going to church. So the Lord told me, you carry the cross. And every day when you go, just tell her you love her. If she's joining you to church, it's good. But never you discuss church. And even when she suggests it, kill it. Because if you dare, you will divide your home. You don't understand. I know some of you don't know the kind of human being that I am. And during that period, she was going through a lot. The only thing is, Wednesday are we going to church? Yes. Sunday? Yes. Are we going to pray? She's always praying. But when it comes to talking about the thing of the church, I escape it. I make it not my topic. Why? I wanted to keep my family in the way of the Lord. And I stayed in that place until I become whatever I am today. What am I trying to teach most of you? Sometimes you talk too much. You don't 
heavy nor to endure with one little fly. You don't know how to trust God to carry you in a process. Look at Jesus. Just look at Jesus. The Bible says, womb through the eternal spirit offered himself. He offered himself. Jesus did not go for self-help. In short, if he tried it, he will fail. So he keep telling us, I do what I see my father do. That means when they insulted him in the day, the father told him in prayer, love them. The, the father said, love them. It is for this purpose I sent you. I sent you here on earth to show them what love is. And now they light against you. They say you cast out devils by Beelzebub. I know. I know it is painful. Then Jesus will go to the father in prayer. The father say, ignore them. Keep doing what you are doing because you are becoming their example. Because if you quit, Satan will win. And you came to restore your relative. Today I will show you from scripture that Jesus is your relative. He is not just your Lord, but he is your relative. So he said, I do what I see my father do. So when you read Luke, Jesus says, follow me. I will show you how. He's telling us now, allow my spirit to help you. You will carry the cross. And you will experience the same power. You will understand why I carried, those, I carried that cross and I did not die. Because the cross, whenever you hear the cross, it speaks of crucifying the flesh. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And the life that I live, I live by the faith of God. You see, Paul, Paul was talking about himself. But you are quoting him now like a new song. Can you see? So I need to read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Look. Then he told them what they could expect for themselves. No, stop. Follow me. Oh. Follow me and I'll show you how. Follow me and I will show you how. That sounds like somewhere in John 16. He said, it's Expedient that I go. If I go, I will send another one. Another comforter. He will be with you and in you. He will take from me and reveal it to you. In other words, he should be the one to lead, not you. Are, are you here? If he leads you, you will carry the cross. But if he's not leading you, the cross will kill you. If he leads you, if he leads you, if you allow him to lead you, most of the things you hear me share in this church, you only hear me share after it is passed. It makes me more anointed because I went through it. So I am not preaching you somebody's experience. I am telling you what I've been through. So when you sit with me, I tell you, shut up. I mean, shut up. Don't come to me most of the time. You are trying to advise me. You 
You're trying to give me lectures about what you think is right. God will not just make somebody your pastor without giving him some experiences or preparing him in some things that will help you. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. We saw in Gethsemane, Jesus was denying to carry the cross. If this be thy will, if this be thy will, he said, nevertheless, none that will. Then who made him do that? The Holy Ghost. Who made him? Do you know when Jesus even ever started his ministry, the first thing he demonstrated to the whole world is that he's going to die. He's going to suffer. What was the first thing he did? What was the first thing? He turned water into wine. That's what John said. Before he turned water into wine, what happened? What? That is also another part. Before he turned water into wine, what happened? He went for baptism. In that baptism, he already told us, I will suffer. And who led him to go for baptism? Still the same Holy Ghost. That's why after the baptism, the same Holy Ghost appeared. And John said, the one that I will see the spirit like a dove descending. This is the one. So John's assignment was finished the day he saw. He's as in short, his preaching was supposed to stop that day. He already showed us he will suffer. He already showed us he would die. But at the same time, they could not kill him before his time. Is somebody getting this? Are you learning something? Don't run away when the persecution comes. When the gossip comes. When the lies are coming. When those things are coming, you are facing the weight of the cross. Is somebody getting me? You are facing the weight of the cross. That is what you are facing. But you see, the cross is not the beginning. Your life begins at the resurrection. Amen. Amen. So the Christian life is the one of power. Yes. Are you getting this? Are you getting what the Lord is trying to communicate to you? So now watch this. Anita, read it. Read it for us. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way. Self-sacrifice is the way. The way to be a blessing. The way to attract his power. Paul said, a glory in my infirmity that the power of God may be upon me. He glory. You need power, but you don't want suffering. You need power. You love a place where they are tolerating your flesh. You love a compromised ground. One day somebody come to church. I'm just coming to check the pastor. I say, come and check yourself. Why are you coming to check? As for me, I'm very unpredictable though. Because you don't know what will happen next. I'm like a win. Coming to check the pastor. Are you done checking yourself? Did you check whether you put perfume this morning? I'm just coming to check. I'm coming to see. Who are you coming to see? 
That's the first step. That your mouth alone is telling you how confused you are. But you don't know. Why didn't you say I'm going to church to meet Jesus? You are coming to see. Do you know how many witch doctors that may be, may be talking to you? And you don't even know. They even greet you every day. Why didn't you check them up? Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way. My way to finding yourself. Your true self. So you don't know you. You don't even know you. Yeah, I know you put makeup this morning, but that's not you. Uh -huh. I know also when you were coming. You had a nice coat. See, I was coming to church. I was supposed to wear my coat. I know I'm already late. So, you know my system. I say, which one is the most common dress you can find? <laughs> I just pick the one that is common. Bam! I say, I'm here. You don't take one hour in the mirror when you didn't take one hour to pray. Yes. You don't take one hour to package your suit when you didn't take 30 minutes to talk to the Holy Ghost. Is somebody getting this? Are you here? It's Passover. It's Passover. Passover. Well, Anita, because they don't want me to continue with this next week. Just read this whole verse. Because you see, I can stay in this thing for another one month. Continue. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? Are you getting this? What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his only? <clears throat> One day, I watched something and somebody said me something. So a sister was standing at the front. Okay. Another one came and said, no, the front is my place. So they pushed the sister at the back. The sister was trying to talk. They didn't listen to her. So she moved from the front. They put her at the back. The door opened at the back. Your trials is your open door. So, where she was standing was not the door. When the trials came, it's like it was coming against everything. And she was shaking a bit. She was shaking a bit. All of a sudden, the person that wanted to talk to them show up. The person opened the door at the back. And she was the first to come in. Then she looked at her friends like this. All of them got frustrated. Sometimes that trial is just there to position you. It is there to position you because you are standing in the wrong place. So you are crying. Why is my life like this? Why is my life like this? One of these days, you will thank God. Why is my life like this? Continue, Anita. If any of you is embarrassed with me and the way I'm leading you, know that the Son of Man will be far more embarrassed with you when he arrives in all his splendor in company with the Father 
and the holy angels. This isn't, you realize, pie in the sky by and by. Some who have taken their stand right here are going to see it happen. See with their own eyes the kingdom of God. What do you want to see? It's a question. That's why the Bible tells you, looking unto womb for the joy that was set, endure the cross, esconing its shame. Now, what joy was set before him? No, we need to know the joy, and we'll close from there. What joy was set before him? <laughs> Let me not ask too much questions. Because if I start to ask questions now, I am moving in this hall. But I begin to see some things. <clears throat> he was made perfect through the things he suffered. That means he was complete. That means anytime you are suffering, you are finishing something. Hey. That is another lesson. Anytime. Anytime you are going through suffering, you are completing something in the spirit to enter another phase. That word perfect means delure. It means, I did not come today to teach. It means to make complete. You are finishing a phase. So you notice after every suffering, there is a glory. Then you go through the process of suffering again, another glory. You go through the place of suffering again, another glory. You go through because suffering means you are completing something. It's the way of saying it is finished. Wow. It's the way of saying it is finished. Because when Jesus was finishing, the last thing we see was suffering. The way of sin. That's why many people start. They never finish. Because anytime you must experience sin finishing, it comes with suffering. Are you in this room? Yes. So you hear them say, it's too complicated. Yes, you are finishing. Have you got into a company, accountants? They are doing end of month, end of year closing. There's a lot of things they are putting it together. Headaches are coming. They are finishing. They are finishing. If they quit there, the job will be canceled. Suffering means there is something you are finishing. There is a page you are closing because you are about to enter in another page. To whom am I talking to? And that is what Passover means. Because they were finishing a chapter of slavery and they were entering a season of freedom. And for that to happen, something had to suffer. Something had to die. Something had to be wasted so that they would enter into the place of freedom. Why are you quitting? Why are you quitting? Don't you want to finish? Don't you want to complete that thing? Do you want to be mad? Like somebody that start projects and never complete it.
It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Let me change my address. Let me go there. I don't want to be. You didn't finish. God is looking at you. Why are you running away? Why are you running away? Why are you running away? Why don't you embrace it? Why don't you endure with it? Why don't you stand with it? Why don't you stay and finish? God is asking you that question. How do you think Jesus finished? How? Look at Hebrew, what Hebrew say? Look at Hebrew again. Hebrew 5. Hebrew 5, verse 8 to 9. Though he were a son, yet learning obedience by the things which he suffered. Then the next verse. And being made complete, being made to finish, he became. When you finish, you become. 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 You see, before you move from class one to class two, you finish something, you become. I, 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 am, I, am I talking to somebody? But you see, they never told you how you finish. And your problem is, you never master how you finish. So another problem come again. You want to quit? No. You are becoming. They call it the genome. The genome. The genome. The genome. Our work with God is becoming. You finish something. You become. You finish this phase. You become. You went through the suffering. You become. They criticize you. You become. They gossip about you. You become. It's like the marriage is failing. You become. Your children are not doing well. You become. There is something that God wants you to become. There is something. There is something that God wants you to become. It's that when the Holy Ghost will come, you will become. You will become. You will become. Receive it. You see. You see. We, we, we don't run from becoming. We should embrace becoming. So Jesus said, don't run. Embrace it. Don't run. Embrace it. He said, don't run. Embrace it. He said, don't run. Embrace it. Embrace it. Stop running. How long will you keep running? Are you not tired running? Are you not tired? Are you not tired? But you see, I came to announce you will finish. You will finish. You will finish. Oh, Jesus. The grace to finish. The anointing of a finisher. Grace to finish. You finish. That certificate for finishing, you receive it. You will receive it. It's a certificate. You will receive it. Jesus. Oh, somebody say, and what was the certificate he received? Us. We are. The, oh, Jesus Christ. That's somebody you will finish. Oh, Jesus Christ. Say you will finish. Oh, Jesus. Say you will finish. You see, it will not be said you went to church. It will be said you finish. That's why Paul said, I have run my race. And I have finished my course. You will finish. I say you will finish. Jesus Christ. You will finish. You finish. You want it to be said. That after the suffering. You enter into perfection. You finish. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Your people will finish. And they will testify. Of the finishing grace. They will testify to their children. They will say, son and daughter, I started. I didn't stop. I finished. Jesus. I finished. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You will finish. You finish. You will finish. Oh. We're not service worship center. We will finish. I said we will finish. Yes. 
There is an anointing that I saw fell on you tonight. Look at this thing. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Finish it. Finish it. Listen. We have run for a while. We will not run anymore. I tell you, 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 you have complained for a while. I see an anointing coming on you. You will not complain. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. You will tell them, ride on. Ride on. Ride on. Ride on. I am here for you. Ride on. Ride on. Jesus. Jesus. Pick him for me. Right on. That decision must be made fast. Yes. Soundness of mind is coming. Pick him. Pick him. Pick him. Don't think too much. It's a new day. Jesus. Take it. 